When I played Lords of the Fallen for the very first time, of course in HDR, I was like, mm, I'm not quite sure if I like this because the game yeah, looked very and still looks a little bit washed out. But the more I analyzed HDR, the more I played actually the Xbox Series X version and the PlayStation 5 version, the more, and actually I have just two words for you, creators intent. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, first things first, this video is recorded in HDR. The problem with HDR on YouTube is that until YouTube has yeah, fully processed HDR, this video will look very odd, washed out, no colors, colors are wrong and stuff like that. But there's nothing I can do about it and I, yeah, I, I didn't want to wait actually until YouTube has processed this video in HDR until I publish it actually. Because I like you to have the best experience in this game in regards to HDR, okay? Keep this in mind, okay? Watch the video if you think it looks odd. Forget about this. This is not my recording because you know my recording is usually on the spot. Perfect. Not perfect, but very close. And yeah, it's just YouTube. Come back later and watch in HDR again. So, and the second thing is I tested the Xbox Series X version, which you can see here, and the PlayStation 5 version on the LG G2, so S95C by the way. And yeah, no PC version because it's just a little bit too much to spend on one game, okay? So I have to say, actually, it's actually quite interesting because I bought the physical version here, but I had to buy the digital version on the PlayStation 5 because there is literally, and it looks like this counts for whole Australia, no physical release so far, or maybe there's a delay or whatsoever. So weird, because usually, you know me, I like physical copies. Anyway, that's for now. And I think now we should start talking about HDR. And as always, we start with the most important question first. Does Lords of the Fallen support the HDR system level calibration on the console? And the yeah, short answer is no. And please keep in mind, I can't verify the PC version, but I'm very sure there is no difference. So again, Lords of the Fallen does not support the HDR system level calibration on the consoles. So, is it actually a problem when we don't have the HDR system level calibration support in a game? No, we don't, or it's not a big problem because we have actually a lot of games where this menu is not supported and we have great HDR in those games. And what we have here in Lords of the Fallen is actually a little bit, it's interesting because when you start the game in SDR, then you have actually a menu called screen calibration, which includes brightness, contrast, and saturation. And now, when you start the game in HDR, you have the same menu and on top you have the menu called HDR calibration where we can yeah, set up the maximum peak brightness and specular highlights and also we can change the user interface brightness. Okay, so let's start with the screen calibration settings first, which again includes the brightness, contrast and saturation settings. So, Let's talk about saturation first because this setting is really a setting and you can yeah you can change it as you like it because there is literally no impact in regards to HDR in regards to HDR maximum peak brightness in regards of HDR average picture brightness okay so change this as you like it the next setting what we have is called brightness setting and the standard factory setting when you start the game for the very first time is 50 and i found this is actually not too bad. Even you play the game with HDIG enabled on an LG OLED TV, I didn't find the picture too dark, not at all, but I increased this setting nevertheless a little bit, okay? But we're talking about my recommended settings a little bit later. The next setting what we have is contrast and to be very honest, the test pattern what we have for contrast is absolutely useless. Because regardless how you change this setting, you decrease this to the minimum value or to the maximum value, there is literally not a really good yeah, test pattern where you can set up your picture. But that's not a big problem because what I found is the standard factory setting 50 is actually pretty, pretty good and I wouldn't change this setting too much. So let's talk about one of the most important things in a game like that. And I'm not talking about gameplay. This is a different video probably and also not performance. This is also a different video. I'm talking about the 
black level floor, the HDR black level race, what we have in many, many games. And what I have to say here, according to my measurements, it's actually pretty good. And right now I'm talking about standard factory setting, yeah, left to 50. So I haven't touched anything on the settings and this is the result right now. And I know the game looks sometimes washed out, but look at the values at the moment. The game actually reaches at certain points or in certain levels, zero or almost perfect black, okay? Almost perfect black. And now we have a problem. So if you like now the game a little bit darker because you think the game looks washed out, then you can actually increase contrast. So don't decrease it because then you will wash out the picture. The only thing what I would recommend if you like it a little bit more darker, then increase this value contrast slightly. Okay. Be careful. Okay. Because if you do this, you have, yeah, a little bit of, yeah, or well, very soon actually you face, you're, you're going to face black level crush. Because what you can see here with the standard factory setting set to 50, so I haven't touched any setting in terms of contrast, we are reaching almost perfect black. That means as soon you increase contrast, you will have crashed black, which means you will lose details in very dark objects. So again, in terms of the HDR black level rays, I'm after my testing, I'm very sure there is almost no problem in regards of the HDR black level floor. But what I found is, and I'm not quite sure if this just counts for this game or this is maybe a general problem and I will look into this. As soon you enable VRR and it doesn't matter if you do this on the Xbox or PlayStation 5. And again, I'm not quite sure if this is just a problem with this game, but as soon you enable VRR, you have additional or you have additional HDR black level rays, which doesn't come from the game, okay? So let's say like this, you can now play with the contrast setting, but you don't get this lifted blacks. You, you can't get rid of it. The only way how to get rid of it is with the fine-tuned dark area settings on the LG OLED uh, TVs or with the shadow detail setting on the S95C, which is a little bit weird because again, I'm not quite sure if this is just an issue with the game or maybe that's a general issue when you enable VRR and I haven't found it so far because yeah, I haven't found it. But again, so if you don't play with VRR enabled on the consoles, and again, I don't know if this happens on the PC as well, but on the consoles, if you don't have VRR enabled, this game is in regards of the HDR black level race almost perfect. Okay, so let's move on and let's talk about the HDR calibration settings, what we have. Also, we have the HDR calibration peak brightness setting and we have the HDR calibration user interface settings, which is really just the user interface. So you can actually increase this or yeah, decrease this as you like it. That's absolutely up to you. In regards of the HDR calibration peak brightness, this of course is a very important setting. The standard factory setting what I found is was 1000, which is not too bad. Even you're using an LG ZX, it is probably a little bit too much. But to be very honest, most of the time you have not much of HDR specular highlights going on in the game. That's at least what I experienced so far. But keep in mind, I haven't played the game for a very long time. Regardless of that, in terms of the settings, I would of course recommend that you change this setting to yeah, actually match your TV. So let's say if you're using an LG ZX, then your maximum peak brightness is roughly around 800 candela. If you're using an LG G2, then it's roughly around 1000. For the S95C on the other hand, because we have always a little bit tone mapping in the background, I would actually recommend to set this to around 1800. So let's talk about colors. Let's talk about BT 2020 HDR colors. Let's talk about the DCI-P3 color space. Is Lords of the Fallen using some of the HDR color space? And the short answer is yes, absolutely at least in the main menu and just when you increase the saturation setting to 100. Just then with the normal setting left to 50, saturation left to 50, there is yeah, literally no HDR color space used in the game. The game actually sticks 
almost 100% of the time to the RC709 color space, which is the SDR range. Unfortunately, no HDR colors in this game. And before I now share my recommended settings with you, let's talk about Dolby Vision, HDRG, HDR10, dynamic tone mapping on and off. And as always, and despite the fact what this is actually telling you, because it actually tells you Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So there is no native Dolby Vision support in this game. Okay, so forget about this. That just means you can actually use Dolby Vision, but again, there is no native support, which would be a complete different story. And my recommendation is actually don't use Dolby Vision on an LG OLED TV, because if you haven't professionally calibrated your LG OLED TV, you will have a yeah, wrong picture when you use Dolby Vision Gaming, because the, yeah, the out of the box calibration is not good, not good. When we compare this with HDR10 and HGHG enabled, HGHG is just much better compared to Dolby Vision Gaming, at least on the LG OLED TVs. And that's why my recommendation is use HGHG in this game because it just, or well, let's say like this, I haven't had any issue to play this game with HGHG enabled, not on my LG CX and not on my LG G2. Of course, DCX is slightly darker than the G2 and I increased actually the brightness, the in-game settings brightness slightly compared to the G2 to match the picture. And yeah, when you do this, you have maybe a little bit of a more washed out picture because you raise also the midtones and stuff like that. But at the end, it was perfectly playable. Dynamic tone mapping on, on the other hand, I, I really don't like it in this game because it's just way too bright in my opinion. But Again, that's just my opinion. Dynamic tone mapping off, as in many other games, is not to recommend because you lose a lot of pop in specular highlights. And now let's talk about my recommended settings for Lords of the Fallen on the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series. And again, I can't verify the PC version, but just give it a try and put in the comment section if my settings are working for the PC version or not. So let's start from the very beginning. The first setting what we have is actually the brightness setting and the standard factory setting is 50, but I increase this setting actually on the LG G2 to 70 to have a yeah, slightly brighter picture. On the LG CX, on the other hand, I actually increase this to 76 roughly to have a little bit or to match actually the LG G2 because the LG CX is slightly darker. On the S95C, on my S95C, I used also 70 because I found this is actually a very good value. In regards of contrast, I did not touch this setting at all because I analyzed and I found that this game with contrast set to 50 is reaching zero or almost perfect black. That means as soon you increase or decrease this, you either have yeah, crushed black levels or you wash out the picture. So my recommendation is if you like it, leave it as it is. Standard factory setting 50 in terms of contrast is my recommendation. And then the next setting is saturation. And I told you already, you can change this setting as you like it. There's no impact in regards of the average picture brightness or the HDR maximum peak brightness in specular highlights. And then of course we have the HDR calibration settings and the HDR maximum peak brightness setting, which should match your TV. So that means for the LG CX, roughly 800 nits, for the LG G2, roughly 1000 nits, and for the S95C, set it to 1800. And the reason is because they are, or on the LG, oh, And then we have the HDR calibration settings and yeah, we start with the HDR maximum peak brightness setting and this setting should actually match the maximum peak brightness capabilities of your TV. That means for the LG CX roughly 800 nits, for the LG G2 roughly 1000 nits and for the S95C set this value to 1800. The reason why we're using 1800 on the S95C is that there is always some sort of tone mapping happening on the S95C and I just found that with 1800 it is just a very good compromise. And last but not least we have the user interface brightness setting and again this setting is absolutely up to you. I did not change it because I found 
my user interface symbols are more than bright enough. But again, set this or change this as you like it. Okay, so what is my summary in regards of HDR in Lords of the Fallen? And I actually like it because when we now compare SDR with yeah, HDR, HDHG enabled, then I found it is just much, much better. And believe me, it's very hard to show actually the real difference on YouTube or with my camera because, yeah, especially when we're talking about shadow details, HDR just shows you a lot more because I was actually really thinking in the very beginning, hey, this game looks, it does look washed out. It It is not, but that's greatest intent for some parts of the games because I found yeah, levels where there is almost, well, there is a perfect contrast because there is no fog around, there is no, no whatever, you know, whatever you call this um, the milky look or whatever. Compared to SDR, HDR shows just much more details, not in just in specular highlights or in terms of colors or in terms of yeah, shadow details. It's just the overall picture is just much, much better. HDR clearly wins in this game in my opinion. So yeah, there's just one recommendation. If you have a proper TV like the LG OLED TVs or a Samsung or maybe a Sony high-end TV, don't use SDR use HDR. Thank you very much for watching me and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.